This podcast is brought to you by Voice and Vision, bringing help, hope, and healing to individuals, families, and communities affected by mental illness, addictions, and disabilities in southeastern Pennsylvania. Financial support for this podcast is provided by a Veterans Trust Fund grant from the Pennsylvania Department of Military and Veterans Affairs. Welcome to Untold Valor, a podcast with a unique focus on veterans, featuring stories of courage, recovery, perseverance, and strength. Listen to hear veterans share their perspectives on what it's like to battle mental health challenges, combat addictions, and overcome other adversities unique to those who have served. Welcome into another edition of the podcast. This is Untold Valor, where we share the experiences and stories from veterans uh, across the country and uh, this week on the podcast we've got Jermaine Wilson joining us. Jermaine welcome in how are you? I'm good I'm good thank you. Absolutely Reverend Ben's here with me once again Reverend Ben how are you today? I'm doing fantastic um, Jermaine thank you so much for coming on today. Um, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes yeah, sure thank you for uh, inviting me to join this podcast. Jermaine Wilson I'm from a small town just north of New Orleans in, uh, in Louisiana it's called Franklinton. I have four siblings and uh, ironic history on us is our family have provided over 90 years of service to the military, specifically to the Navy. My father did nine years. My brother served 20 years and retired. And my two sisters also served uh, 20 plus years each and retired. Two of us retired as reservists and two retired as active duty. Wow, that's fantastic. Um, Upon... Yeah. Family tradition, you could say. Mm -hmm. The one difference is um, my father and my siblings were all enlisted members and they pushed me to uh, continue my education, get my college degree. And when I joined, I joined the the reserves, but I joined as an officer. Okay. Okay. And and how long did you serve? I served for 21 years. I retired in um, June of 2020 and I retired. Uh, primarily so I could uh, have more presence and time with my family. At the time, my son was uh, eight years old or nine years old, getting into those very impressionable years. Mm -hmm. And I wanted Mm -hmm. to have a uh, more presence there with him, not having to leave and go on uh, duty on weekends and uh, potentially getting deployed again. Uh, So I I wanted to be a good good role model and, and be present to be that role model. Yeah, I understand that for certain. Uh, you know, with so much history in the family, uh, you know, one of the things we do on the podcast is we try to highlight, share stories, uh, good or bad, whatever the case is, but just really just to help other veterans realize that, you know, there's there's so many people that are in similar situations or things of that nature that they may have encountered. Any stories you'd like to share with us today on on what you might've experienced in your time in the service or, or a family story even uh, that uh, unfortunately, you know, sometimes deals with uh, veterans not asking for help or, or realizing they need help. There's so many that I can share. There's, there's one that touches me at the, at the very beginning. Uh, When I first received my commission and joined the Navy, I believe it was my third month of drilling as a reservist and had just uh, was just assigned to my unit. And my wife and I were expecting our first child. And we lost her. Oh, no. And so that when we lost her, we had our memorial services that first weekend with my new command. So I, I missed a day of the of duty. And it was that Saturday. And so that Sunday, I did report for duty. When I walked in, the entire command stopped and they, uh, the, the CO came over and gave me a card, a sympathy card. And all of them expressed their condolences to me. And it was it was very warm because this is a group of men and women that I, I've just met. So they really don't even know me and I not know them. Mm-hmm. But that actually opened up and kind of told me what type of, of service I just joined, where the camaraderie and the care for one another is there. And how are you coping with that now? I mean, obviously, you know, you spent your time in the service. Uh, did you feel like you know, did that kind of affect you along the way? Did it make it harder? Did I'm sure that probably played a factor in, in your reason to retire as well, so you could spend more time with your other children. Yeah, it it did. It did play a factor in me retiring that, uh, when I did, so I could be there more with my son. But it also told me uh, just how strong my brothers and sisters are in the in the Navy 
and how, you know, how supportive they are. And it also gave me an influence to be be that shoulder and that support for others. It comes back to you. For example, there was a, a young lady that um, reached out to me after it had to be 10 years later after I was her CEO. And she reached out to express her thanks to me because she had experienced sexual harassment from her command. Mm. And the higher, further up that chain of command, they were not taking action to resolve it. And she didn't know what to do. And she reached out to me, being outside of her command at the time, for advice. I gave her some guidance and the process of which she would need to follow to go forward. She did so. She filed a complaint, official complaint, and it was addressed very quickly and resolved the issue with those sailors uh, being reassigned and having their appropriate um, punishments laid upon them. But she thanked me from the fact of what made her call me that day was the situation with Vanessa Gillian, the U.S. Army specialist out of Fort Hood, that ultimately lost her life associated with being sexually harassed in a, a right. sexual harassment relationship. Yeah, wow. that's a that's a great point, and I think it's having someone you can talk to, right, Reverend Ben is 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 huge. Is is finding someone you can confide in, especially if you're not you know being taken seriously or, or getting the the um, the help that you need sometimes from your chain of command. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Having someone to talk to is vital, especially in the military, because often, um, like, like uh, Jeremy just said, we go to duty stations. We, we don't know anybody there. It's just us. And you show up this, you know, uh, we're all in the same. Uh, we're all in the military. We're all in the Navy. But you're by yourself when you show up. So having someone to talk to is very important, very vital. And, you know, um, Jeremy, and I was listening to you and you know, being a veteran, and you shared a lot about what's happening on the inside. But after you're home now and you're um, serving on the other side, let me ask you a question. Have any of your friends that you have experienced any any homelessness, any physical disabilities associated with like post-traumatic stress disorder or things associated with the military? Maybe not homelessness, but um, I do have several, as we say, several of my boys that were prior military, they have either retired or medically discharged. Two that come to mind that um, that retire and they um, retire with PTSD and are uh, considered 100 percent disabled vets. One, well, both are are doing much, much better now. One has become a minister and preaching to a, a very nice uh, size flock. And the other, he's gone into a social uh, social services type role uh, where he's also trying to mentor others as well. Well, it's always good to see veterans giving back into the community, um, when, especially when we get out the military. Because one thing about the military, it gives you military bearing. And uh, it's a certain way of life that we have in us. It is still something in us. I'm a veteran, too, so I, I know. You know that that military smartness and that neatness and that and that way of thinking, right. uh, which guides many of us. And, and listen, even for me myself, um, going in at the age seventeen, I can clearly say that the military made a man out of me. It made a man out of me. But the good, with the ups and the downs, I was an enlisted man. I was a non-commissioned officer. I was a commissioned officer. So I guess if we were on the inside, I would be saluting you. But I'm going to salute you anyway today <laughs> for your service. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll, I'll share this with you. Um, when I first joined, going through the medical lines, et cetera, you know the process. Already in uniform, I was an ensign, and I was talking with several enlisted sailors in there. Later that day, that one of those uh, junior enlisted sailors I was speaking with came to me and he said, sir, I really appreciate you just holding that conversation in there with me. I was like, sure, why not? He said, did you look around at some of the other officers that were in in that room at the time? They were looking at you like, why are you speaking to that junior sailor? And I said, well, you remember this, young man. I said, every one of us was a man or a woman 
before we became a service man or service woman and always give that respect first. That's a great point. Yes. Absolutely. You know, Jermaine, let me ask you a question. I wanted to kind of dig in a little bit here on the family aspect. So are you the youngest? You, you mentioned you had sisters that served as well. Or are you, where do you fall in that line? I am. I am the youngest. My yeah. brother is 10 years older and my two sisters are between he and I. And when you guys get together and talk, share stories, have you <laughs> seen differences? Like, you know, the, obviously the experience has changed, right, from your dad, you know, down to you. Um, anything that really kind of jumps out there that, that really surprised you and, and how, you know, being in the service changed or getting help within the service changed, you know, through those 90 years you talked about? So imagine it's got to be massive, right? The differences from the, from the uh, you know, when your dad's time to your time. One thing I will, I do recall my dad mentioning was that Please. during his time in the service, there were very few officers that were African-American. Mm -hmm. And in comparison to him, you know, coming to uh, the base with me a, a few times and as well as with my brother and sisters, that was one thing he pointed out. Another difference is, you know, to him, it seemed as though we have many more um, stations on land pretty much his entire time in the Navy, he spent aboard ship. I believe he mentioned that he has sailed around the world three times, mm. all on aircraft carriers. Yeah, uh, and that's a different animal. Served, yeah. I'm sorry? I like, that's a different animal, uh, I'm sure, being that much at sea versus, you know, land time. Yes, yes. And the hero through it all is is my mother. She actually served all 90 of plus of those years with us. I lost mom last year mm. in May, but she was able to see her husband's full career and all four of her children start and retire their naval careers and sent us so many wonderful care packages too. Yeah. The, the young sung hero, right? Right. Uh, and moms. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's interesting. You, you brought that up. My daughter is, is stationed in the Navy now. It's her third year and she's just at her, on her first deployment. And uh, she said it's definitely a different animal, you know, being aboard the carrier when, you know, at sea uh, versus being stationed on land. So she's uh, getting a taste of that right now. So we'll see how that goes when she returns, but uh, she's got many years to go. So <laughs> she's got many, many more <laughs> floats to go. But uh, Reverend Ben, anything else we can think of that we uh, didn't cover today? Uh, some some good information here from Jermaine. Listen, I think we covered we covered a lot of areas today. I noticed, Jermaine, that you did mention about the, uh, the disparity of as far as like officers, black officers versus white officers. I just wanted to ask you, um, when you went in, did you have a similar experience when you went in being a, being a black officer? Because even when I was in in the 80s, uh, a black officer was, was rare. I did. Uh, in fact, my uh, Supply Corps qualifications course, there were 27 of us, and there were only uh, four African-American, two male, two female. And throughout the rest of my career, even though the population, the, the numbers of African-American increased, it was still a, a, a good disparity. I will say that one of the top uh, individuals, a two-star admiral, Admiral Keith Jones was African-American that did make it to the, the highest rank, typically, that a, a supply officer uh, attains. Thank you. Thank you for the clarity. Absolutely. Well, we thank you so much for your time, Jermaine, on the podcast. Uh, any final messages you'd like to share with others that are listening, uh, obviously, with such a rich history in your family? Um, anything you'd like to share to veterans out there who are checking out the podcast? Yes. Uh, the, the Navy, the military as a whole, sometimes it doesn't get the the full regards that it should. It is a wonderful career and it is a, a true brotherhood, sisterhood organization. Yes, we are there to support and defend our country and our democracy, but you build a bond with, with people that last forever. Well said. Well, thank you so much for your time, Jermaine. We appreciate you uh, here on the podcast. Thank you. You've been listening to Untold Valor by Voice and Vision. We hope you found the information and resources discussed today helpful. As always, thank you for listening and for your support. 
Remember to stay connected with us through our various social media platforms, including Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Don't forget to visit the website, voiceandvisioninc.org. That's voiceandvisioninc.org, where you can sign up for our blog and find free resources and information on upcoming events, webinars, workshops, and get support. You can also access our free help and hope guide for individuals and families struggling with substance use and addiction. If someone you know is struggling, please reach out for help because you and your life matter. Remember, the National Suicide and Crisis Lifeline is available to you at any time by dialing 988. We are all ambassadors of hope and recovery. And if you want to share your story, please contact us. Compure Corps is also looking for veteran mentor volunteers and veteran participants. To find out more information about Compure Corps, please call 610-541-0790. That's 610-541-0790. You can find all the links and contact information for the resources mentioned on today's episode by checking the description and the show notes section of your app. Thank you again for tuning in and for your support. Until next time, this has been Untold Valor.